how to use a flue gas analyzer to help with your benchmark certificate or your benchmark logbook. My name is Alan Hart and today I'm at Viva Training Academy and I'm with a, a super duper trainer today and with Roy. Roy Roy has been a trainer now, he's worked at Baxi for over 20 years and he's, now he's come to Viva Training Academy to train the new recruits there and he's going to go through the flue gas um, analyzer with us today and he's going to go through all the different settings on it so for using it for when you're testing for your emissions but also he's going to show us how to fill the benchmark in or, or some of the readings you would need to fill the benchmark in so he's going to go through the temperature how to set your flow and returns show you about flow and return temperatures he's also going to show you with your hot tap running the hot tap and showing you your temperature rise so on a boiler we've got a certain temperature rise and Roy's going to go through all that with you as well without further ado let's go over to Roy at Viva Training Academy this video is for gas safe registered and trainee gas engineers under supervision please comply with the current regulations at the time Hi guys, it's Roy Fugle from Viva Training Academy here in Halifax again. Today we're going to go through um, how you would use a flue gas analyzer, and all the different uses it's got, not just flue gas analysation but the other things that you can do with it. The very useful tools, particularly for filling in benchmark, we're going to go through some of those tests that you would need to complete your benchmark. Benchmarking is a legal requirement. It's also a warranty requirement, so when you guys are fitting boilers out there, you're filling your benchmark in. So if you're unfortunate enough to have a warranty call, the manufacturers will check that benchmark to prove that it's been installed to benchmark. So let's crack on. The first thing we're going to do is do a flue gas analysis. So first thing we do before we use any analyzer is check that it's in calibration. This one was recently calibrated. So I've now got a calibration sticker on there which proves it's been certificated so I know that this is fine to use. Obviously if it's out of calibration any readings wouldn't be legally binding. The other thing I'm looking at I've got a filter in there to protect it from any grime. I've also got a water trap so when I'm working on condensing boilers obviously it's pulling in some moisture and to make sure that that's clear. There's a little plug at the bottom which unscrews to release any moisture that's in there. It's most important that when I'm doing an analysation I've got that in so I'm not pulling any moisture from there. It's in a lovely protective boot so that I don't damage it. When I'm doing flue gas analysis on this particular analyzer there's two options. If I'm doing benchmarking so basically it's a set process a combustion test per the manufacturers I would use it on combustion test and it basically talks you through how to do that test. I'm just going to be doing a flue gas analysation so I would have it on ratio. I'll explain more when we connect it onto the boiler and pop it on. So the, first, the next thing I'm going to do now is just get my probe. I'm going to plug it into the analysation port and there's also a little temperature connection which goes in so it can measure flue temperature because that can allow it to work out combustion efficiencies. So I've got the analyzer pre-purged, you turn the analyzer on and it's purging itself. I've purged it in fresh air so that it's got uh, a basic reading there on my, uh, my levels and I can scroll up and down and check them. So I've got my ratio, my CO, my O2, excess oxygen and pressures. I'm only going to be using the analysation part of it. So the next thing I'm going to do is turn my boiler on I'm going to put the hot tap on to get that boiler to fire up onto high. The first test that I'm going to do is compulsory under benchmarking. Uh, when you install a boiler, they ask you to do a flue integrity test. What it's doing is checking that you have put that flue together correctly. Most times it will be a concentric flue, so you've got an inner flue, an inside and outer air ducts, and it's making sure when you've put the joints together, you've not got any of those joints misaligned or pushed out. So on this particular boiler, on the right hand side up on the flue turret there is a little plastic plug. That allows me to go into the air duct. 
So what I'm doing, I'm measuring the air that the boiler is breathing. If that air was contaminated, that would affect my combustion results. So if I didn't test it, I may not be aware that I've got a problem, but by testing it, I'm proving it's breathing nice, clean, fresh air in. I've just moved the analyzer across to oxygen, O2 and efficiency. The O2 figure I'm looking for is somewhere above 20.6. This is 20.9. So I know it's breathing nice, clean, fresh air. I've got the boiler running because obviously if it wasn't running, I'd get clean, fresh air coming through. So I'm checking to make sure I've got no cross-contamination. So the next thing I will do is move that across, taking out that plug in the center and popping it in. So now I'm doing a flue gas analysis. This is an older boiler. You don't have a uh, way of forcing it to high, forcing it to low like a lot of the modern boilers. This one I've just put the hot tap on. I've got it going up to high. In a previous video, we went through setting the gas valve on this, which I've recently done. So I know that the gas pressure is correct. So I'm looking at a ratio figure of 0 0.0005. If you've got manufacturer's instructions, check the manufacturer's instructions. They may give you the figures for that particular boiler. This one, the back to here, there was no manufacturer's figures given for those. So we go back to British standards. The figure I would look for on the ratio on this one because it's a condensing bow is below 0 0.004 and this one 0 0.006 so I know that it's burning correctly. So I'm quite happy with the flue gas analysis. Right so we've used it in flue gas analyzer mode. The most important thing when you're doing it is refer to your manufacturer's instructions. The manufacturers will, will give you figures some for high, some for low, it depends on the boiler. The newer boilers, where you can force them to high, force them to low. Some manufacturers call it chimney sweep, service mode, various things. Always refer to those. Some may ask you for CO2 figures, some may ask you for ratio figures. Just refer to your manufacturer instructions to make sure you're checking them correctly. So we're going to move on now to using the analyzer in manometer mode. So I don't need the probes anymore. I'm going to pop those to one side. I'm going to turn around and go on to pressures and temperatures. It's then asking me to zero. Now a little trick with the cane analyzer. If you zero it in the vertical plane, so I'm just going to zero this one. So that's zeroed. And then put it into the horizontal plane. It will actually change the figure, but only very, very slightly. So if we're doing normal burner pressures, normal working pressures, it's only adjusted it by 0 0.02 of a millibar, so it's nothing to worry about. Some manufacturers may ask you for differential pressures. Now, if you're doing that, you'd need to zero it again. It's one of these things. Sometimes we'll put our analyzer down, we'll zero it, we'll then pick it up. And what I normally do, I stick it on the front of my boiler. So before I'm going to use it, I always use the zero button just to make sure I'm getting it bang zero. So the next thing we're going to do on this one is a working pressure. On this it's a burner pressure because it's an older boiler we can do a burner pressure. Some of your modern condensing boilers with zero governors, you don't do a burner pressure, you do an inlet working pressure. So that's what we're going to do next. So the next piece of equipment I need is my manometer tube and I'm going to pop that in to the bottom. So it just goes into the pot. I've got two parts on this particular analyzer, P1 and P2. So I pop it into P1. P2 is used if I was doing differential pressures. Again, it's on the front. So because I've moved it, I zero it. So I'm just going to connect onto the top part, which is the burner pressure part. Using the easy connector again, pop that in there and I'm turning the boiler on and again I'm popping the hot tap on because I want to check it on high. So we've checked the high and we're on 10 point, just over 10.1 millibar. The manufacturers say for this particular boiler on the data badge it should be 10.2 on maximum so we're bang on perfect. So we know that that's giving the correct gas pressure at the burner. 
So then the next thing we do is check our hot water temperature. So I'm going to move on to do that by using the temperature probe. Right, so we're now going to uh, check water temperature. I'm using the same screen that I was on before because it's got pressures and temperatures. I'm going to take the pressure tube away just so it doesn't get in my uh, interfere with what I'm doing. So I've now got a immersion temperature probe which I'm going to put into uh, T1 because then it's measuring it so that's on there. The reason that we measure water temperatures on a combination boiler depending on the output you have a temperature rise. Most manufacturers now work to a 35 degrees C rise. What that means is it will take the cold water temperature and raise it by 35 degrees, providing you're, you've got the correct gas pressure going into there, which we know we have. Your plate heat exchange is performing correctly. You've no blockages and things like that. In the benchmark, it talks about water temperatures and temperature rises. All we're doing is proving the boiler's doing what it says. So what we'd normally do is do a weir cup or a flow cup reading to check the water flow rate's correct. Um, this particular boiler, it's an 80 kilowatt, uh, sorry, 80,000 BTU, which is around about 24 kilowatt. So we'd be looking at somewhere in the region of eight to 10 litres a minute. So we could measure that with a flow cup. We then check the cold water temperature. This time of year, we could be looking at as low as 10 degrees coming in. So with a 35 degree rise, we could be looking at a 45 degree um, outlet temperature. We're going to be covering more things like that in, a vi in future videos about using flow cups and other test equipment. So for now, what I'm going to do is turn the boiler back on, stick the hot tap on, and then I'm going to wait for it to rise up, the boiler to fire, and then I'm going to pop the uh, probe in there and see what temperature we get. So at the moment, the boiler's just about to fire up. We've got it, it's now lit. So I've got my temperature probe and I'm just holding it in the water just as it's coming out of the tap. And the water's sitting there just shy of 44 degrees. If I measure the cold water inlet, and that's less than 10 degrees, I know I'm getting around about my 35 degree rise. Right, so we've just done the hot water temperature, so I'm going to remove that probe um, because what I want to do now is the flow and return temperatures and that's an immersion probe so it's no good, I wouldn't get an accurate reading. So what I've got is these uh, clamp-on probes or like big crocodile clips. The reason that we measure flow and return differential, again it's part of benchmarking, it's telling us if we're getting the correct difference between the flow and return that we've got good circulation around our system. Our system is quite well balanced. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to prop, pop these two in there. So one goes on the flow, one goes on the return. What you try to do is get them equal distance. So you don't want one right up against the boiler and one three foot away. So I'm just going to pop these connections on there. Under this particular boiler there's a couple of sockets where the tails are, so that's ideal because I know those sockets are equal distance. So I'm just waiting for it now to settle out. The temperature on the front of the boiler is saying it's somewhere round about 50 to 60 degrees. So now when I'm looking I've got a floor temperature of 51 degrees, a return temperature of 38 which is giving me a differential of about 13 degrees. On a standard sort of efficiency system, this type of system, we're looking for somewhere around about 11, 12 degree differential. On a condensing system, a full condensing system, we're looking around about 20 degrees differential. So I know that I've got good circulation around this heating system. So that's just a little bit of how you'd use an analyzer, what you can use it for. They're not just a flue gas analyzer. A lot of these analyzers are multi-tools. They're very, very useful. I've been using a cane, there are other manufacturers out there, um, but I particularly like the cane because it's quite simple to use, me being a simple fella. Again, thanks for tuning in to uh, another one of Alan's great videos. Um, I'm Roy from Viva, thanks very much, I'll see you soon. Thank you very much for that Roy, and once again thank you to Viva Training Academy for helping us do these videos and helping you guys as well, it's, um, yeah, it's brilliant. If you've got any questions, please, please ask them in the comments below. And as always, if you could like and share all that good stuff. Thank you for watching.